When you're in a Chapter 13, there's a lot of requirements. I mean, you know, you're in this repayment plan. You need to stay employed because you need to be able to make the payments. Um, you have to submit your tax returns every year. And I think, did you pay for one of your cars through the Chapter 13? Yes, it was um, an old car loan. I was actually almost done paying for it, but I paid the rest of the, the debt on the through the Chapter 13. Like I was explaining to you earlier, in that process of the Chapter 13, I was able to buy a house. I mean, I did have to, you know, notify um, any time I applied for something like a, a home loan. I had to do some things like, you know, prove that how much I was making, whether I could afford it and everything. And as long as I could do that, um, I was able to buy the house. It didn't ruin my credit score, like many people, I guess, would assume. You can still um, accumulate credit and, and get your credit score in fixed during Chapter 13 bankruptcy, which is, uh, which is definitely a positive if anyone's considering that and, and, and worried about that. Hi, this is attorney Jamie Miller, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Miller Law Chronicles. Um, today, we're going to focus our conversation about, uh, focus it on Chapter 13. And uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to be really excited about bringing on uh, a friend and a client named Matthew Dillon. Uh, Matthew is going to tell us a little bit about his Chapter 13 experience and um, how he's navigated Chapter 13 to help get rid of his debts um, into being able to buy his own home. He's even going to tell you about how he decided after growing up in Arizona to actually move to Wisconsin. How many people, how many people get to do that? But I wanted to give you a brief description of Chapter 13. Um, so Chapter 13 is a repayment plan. Um, we do Chapter 13s here in the state of Wisconsin for people that you know are behind on a mortgage payment or behind on a car payment, or like in Matthew's case, when you don't qualify for a Chapter 7, which is a discharge of your debts because of a prior Chapter 7 filing. So there's different reasons why we would recommend a Chapter 7, a discharge of one's debts, or a Chapter 13, which is a repayment plan. Uh, it's very case specific, um, but e either a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13, there are amazing tools um, to really help people manage their debts. So I'd like to welcome Matthew um, to our Miller Law Chronicle podcast today. Hey Matthew, how are you doing? Great. How are you doing? I'm good. It's so nice to have you. I, I am very grateful uh, to have had you as a client, uh, to be able to call you a friend, and to have you join me on our, our podcast today. It means a lot uh, when we've had people that are um, just willing to give their time and, and help other people. So I appreciate that, Matthew. Thanks for having me. Sure, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on, um, many people have trepidations um, about filing bankruptcy, and I think it's important, and I, and I get that, um, but I think it's important to have people who have gone through the process who can really give us some insight into what their journey was, because I, I know it's really helpful um, to those who may need to go through a bankruptcy to kind of see what someone else's journey is. and. Again, I'm just grateful for you taking taking the time to, to be with us today. Um, I'd like to kind of take you back a little bit. Um, tell me a little bit about where you were born and uh, your journey and how you ended up coming to Wisconsin. Okay, so I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, <clears throat> the job I, I had out there had um, closed and was uh, there was an office a uh, big warehouse, actually, I'm sorry. And they were moving locations out in another area of Arizona. That So I had a, had a decision of whether I wanted to move or find another job closer to where my where a lot of my family lived, which was in Michigan. So I looked and, and I found a job that, that was, you know, 
relatively the same pay that was close to Michigan, which was Wisconsin. <laughs> and uh, so I moved out here, be, uh, started working, and um, well, that's that part. Right. So you you were you were living in Arizona, and right. um, you decided that for job reasons, it, it it was kind of the impetus to have you move on. But you actually made the decision to move from the warmth of Arizona to the trees, the frigid, really um, weather of uh, cold weather of Wisconsin. Is that is that true? Well, you know, when people think of the warmth, they're thinking of, you know, the 90 degree summers that, you know, days that we have sometimes out here. No, it, it's like over 100 degrees half the year. It's not a very pleasant temperature. <laughs> Some people like that, but, you know, most people that are out there are, are miserable and right. they, they actually like to go, to, you know, drive up to Flagstaff every now and then and get out of it where it's nice and fresh. Because that's not that far a drive. But um, I, I lived there my whole life, and I wanted to, um, you know, go to a place that had trees and lakes and and, and had nature and, and seasons. And, um, you know, I, I did not want to just live in the same place my whole life. And I just had the opportunity of whether I wanted to, to stay in a place where I didn't have much family left there, you know, or, or make a, you know, a, an actual you know, take a risk and, and, and do something like make a huge move, which is 3,000 miles away. Right. And I did, you know, and, and it worked. So I'm, I'm much happier out here. I, Most I, people I, don't do it. Like you said, they don't, they do the opposite. Right. And they move to Phoenix. Right. I, but, I, I um, love that. And so you, you've been in Wisconsin about eight years now? Five years. About five years. Great. Right. And then you're married. Um, do you have any I kids? Have two kids. Two kids. How old are your kids? Uh, my daughter is 16. My son is 14. Now. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's a uh, can be a challenging age, uh, but a great age. Um, well, for my daughter, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, are they in high school? My daughter is in high school. My son will be going to high school next year. Okay, but, it's not... uh, that is challenging. <laughs> so you you are um, currently employed, and I understand you're working uh, in Roundies at Roundies here in Oconomowoc. That's correct. Great. And how long have you worked at Roundies? Five years now. That was a, that was the job I moved for. Yeah. And and what do you do at Roundies? Forklift driver. All right. Um, for our listeners, what what does Roundies do? I, I know they're a food distributor. Um, well, if you ever heard of Kroger, it's it's Kroger owns them. It's just like the second largest grocer in in America, or you know, soon to be first if they merge with Albertsons, which I heard they were going to do. Um, but they, uh, we, we just handle all the stores orders and get them shipped out to the stores through that warehouse. I, and I forklift them dealing with the machine, putting away pallets and taking them in and stuff. It's, it's, it's man, you know, it's a, it's a job, it's a union job. So it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so tell me, uh, you, I'm sure you're working a lot. What, what do you like to do when Try. you're not working? Oh, if I could be with my family, take them to a movie, or um, go some, you know, I live right near the lake, you know, or, um, so I like to do that. I have a little canoe. <laughs> um, or just be with my wife and, and watch TV, I guess. She loves doing that. <laughs> so, yeah. That. Or calling my friend at Miller & Miller. Okay, I appreciate that. You, um, yeah, I mean, you, you have just this positive vibe and outlook, and uh, it's very, it's very inspiring. And I, I think it's probably, you know, was really instrumental in what's allowed you to go through some challenging times financially um, to get to get to where you are now. And I'm, I'm proud um, to say that you know we were able to help you. But we couldn't have done it without your attitude and, and your willingness to address some of the financial issues that you're having to really help you, um, you know, get to where you are today. And um, mm. I want to take you back. So in 2012, when you were living in Arizona, um, unfortunately, you ran into some financial issues and you had to do a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So right. tell me a little bit, what, what, what happened that you had to file a Chapter 7 in 2012? 
Well, if anyone out there remembers the mortgage crisis that we had, that started um, started in 2006, the two states that were hit the hardest, I believe, was Florida and Arizona. So I had a house that was, um, you know, upside down, worth, you know, it was worth about forty thousand dollars. It was sold in auction. I bought it for one thirty. <laughs> And in my adjustable rate mortgage too. On top of that, it went doubled my interest rate, and, and you know I want I was trying to keep it, but I had a divorce at the same time. I was being a single father, working, and it's tough in Phoenix. People, you know, like you said, they move out to Phoenix, but you know it, it's more relaxed out here than Phoenix. So you're you're definitely having to struggle harder out there. So I did decide to do a chapter to get my finances straight because I went through foreclosure unfortunately and um, yeah that that was that <laughs> yeah that's and then, that part. so, so you, you had a um, you had bought a condo and right. and uh, um, it just didn't work out for you so you needed the seven so you could surrender the condo and get out from um, underneath the obligation with that. Right, right. And, you know, I had, I incurred some debt because, I, you know, the mortgage uh, payment, like, went up almost double, like, overnight because of the adjustable rate. So, you know, I just, I had, I was wanted to still keep the place, but I was incurring more debt doing it. And, you know, credit cards went up and even got a title loan, which, uh, you know, I don't think that's even legal out here, but it's, it's legal in Phoenix. No, we, we can definitely get them here. I, uh, oh, really? Okay. Just I don't I don't recommend anyone gets those. Is it? <laughs> right. um, yeah, the interest is pretty high on that. So, um, you know, one thing just led to another, and I had to start over again. And um, that helped me. And I didn't think I was going to have to go through Chapter 13, but I guess we'll get into that. Once when right. I'm so you filed Chapter 7 in 2012, and um, just... Keep your head up because you're talking really great. I can, you're such a good looking guy. It's good, it's good oh, to see you. your face. Good to see thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the uh, in 2012, um, you filed and you surrendered, got out from underneath the debt, you got your fresh start. Did your credit come back after that chapter seven bankruptcy? Did you think no, it improve? Yeah, it gradually did. Yes, it did. It, it was good. And then, so then you ended up moving leaving Arizona and mm -hmm. then coming to Wisconsin. And did you right away find your job at, at Roundy's? Was that well, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to move it without finding a, a job first. So yeah, that I, I had managed to, to, um, um, you know, have the job for me. And you know, I, I actually moved out here with no place to live. I had the job and no place to live at first. So, uh, but I, I, I wanted to have a job um, set, so um, yeah, I, I did that and rented and. But um, if, if you want to get into the thirteen, I think that's yeah. Not when, you, when you put your head down, it gets muffled. So yeah, so if you keep your head up, you're great. Okay. Now go ahead. No, you're perfect. Yeah. So um, it's a good paying job and everything. You know, I wasn't struggling until until. Right before I left Phoenix to move up here, I was served with a lawsuit from an old apartment. And um, that ended up uh, causing attorney fees and everything. It was about $12,000 that I was going to return. And I did not want to have that. I wanted to have a fresh. I was moving to another state. I was, um, you know, just starting over again. I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't have, you know, 25% of my checks garnished just, you know, starting over again like that. And I, I had just done a Chapter 7, like, in 2012. And this we're at about, what are we at now? 2018 when this happened. So um, six years, I can't do a Chapter 7 again. I know that. Um, so that's when I called you guys and, and discussed my options. Right. Was it Was it... Was it hard to make that call? Um, you know, that first call to the to a bankruptcy lawyer. Um, well, you know, you don't know exactly who you can trust, especially if you're in a different state and everything. 
But um, you know, I your 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 name is pretty popular out here. I heard a lot of commercials. <laughs> I will say that. So that that is how I ended up um getting familiarized with you guys and gave you guys a call. But you guys made it very easy, very easy to understand, and you guys were very helpful the first time I met. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you saying that. That's, you know, we understand that people come to us in, in vulnerable situations where they're scared. Oh, yeah. And our job is consistently to help diagnose what the problem is and then offer multiple solutions to help our clients really make the decision that's best. I mean, we just really want to um, uh, present the issue to the, the best our ability and allow the clients to, to move on. And I remember when you came on, came in, and you were anxious and scared and didn't want to um, have to um, think about filing another bankruptcy. And we knew that Chapter 7 wasn't, um, wasn't going to work because you can only file a, a Chapter um, 7, I mean a Chapter 13, um, within six years after your chapter seven, and we and we didn't pass that pass that time. You didn't qualify for a chapter seven. You had to wait eight years for that. But you definitely qualified for a chapter thirteen. So we we put you in the chapter thirteen, and you ended up um, making payments in the chapter thirteen for for five years, which is so hard. Um, Tell me, tell me a little bit about the challenges that you may have found in in making those Chapter Thirteen payments. Well, yeah, I mean, it was um, getting deducted out of my account every month. So you know that around the twenty second or twenty third of every month, I was the twenty sixth. I don't know, but uh, I knew it was coming. It was, you know, it wasn't too large a payment, but you know, it, it was a, uh, it was like a, maybe like a car payment worth of uh, expenses. And, you know, it wasn't too hard, though. Uh, I, I only fell behind once in that five years, but I knew that if I did not complete the obligation of the Chapter 13, and it, then it would be discharged and it would go, it would, it would hurt. That's my understanding. Right. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah, so if, if you, when you're in a Chapter 13, there's a lot of, requirements. I mean, you know, you're in this repayment plan, the repayment right. plan is three to five years. And while you're in the chapter 13, you need to stay employed because you need to be able to make the payments. Um, right. You have to submit your tax returns every year. Um, I think in your case, um, you may have had to pay half of your refunds into the chapter 13. But that that's since changed, which is a which is a nice thing. And I think, did you, did we pay or did you pay for one of your cars through the chapter 13? Yes, it was um, an old car loan. What happened was the car, you know, I was actually almost done paying for it, but um, the, the car ended up, uh, what are you calling it, dying on me. Uh, um, it was an old car. So I, I, had, I had, I think, about a year's worth of payments on a car that was undrivable. <laughs> so uh, I ended up having to... Um, I think I ended up selling it to charity, but I paid the rest of the, the debt on the beach through the chapter 13. And, um, you know, a lot of, it, they, they, it ended up getting about, still about 60, I, I saw the itemized statement, of $60,000 worth of um, um, debt that was, uh, had, what, do you, what would you say, it's not collateral, there's no collateral to it, or... Right, that's just unsecured. Unsecured, that's right, that's the term. So about sixty thousand dollars of unsecured debt was able to get uh, wiped off, and and that was and in that was that you know apartment complex with the lawsuit that was able to get discharged from my record. But you know, in the process, like I was, um, I was like I was explaining to you earlier, in that process of the chapter thirteen, I was able to buy a house. I mean, I did have to, you know, notify. Um, Anytime I applied for something like a, a home loan, I had to do some things like, you know, prove that how much I was making, whether I could afford it and everything. And as long as I could do that, um, I was able to buy the house. So I had the credit score. It didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't ruin my credit score like many people, I guess, would assume it would, it would do. 
so, you know, since I was able to buy a house, obviously. Right. Um, and then after that, my wife um, just just about a year ago bought a, a new car. So you know, you can still you can still um, accumulate credit and, and get your credit score fixed during the Chapter 13 bankruptcy, which is a which is definitely a positive if anyone's considering that and, and worried about that. Right. Yeah. It's a. Uh... It's it's amazing because, you know, when someone files a bankruptcy, and I never want to say, hey, you know, everyone should file bankruptcy. It's the best no. thing to do. <laughs> it's right. far from it. And I, I, I know, Matthew, that you didn't want to do it, but no, we, no. we had to, you know, prevent you from getting garnished and, you know, allow well, right. you to... I'm hoping I'm not trying to um, promote it like it's a great thing. I, I would definitely not advise anyone to, to, to do it if they don't have to. Of course. But if they're, if, if they're really struggling and they're, they're, they're really looking at their options and, and desperate, not, you know, there's options out there. You can call Miller and Miller like I did, you know, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. But, you know, you, you don't, it's, it's one of those things that you don't do it if you don't have to. But it, it's definitely good to have that option and people should be aware of it. Right. And what we, what we do to try to help our clients is um, to help them after we file the bankruptcy, to help them get back on their feet, to help rebuild their credit, to help get the credit score to 720. And, and, and right. in your case, even while you were in the bankruptcy, you were able to buy a home and you were able to, to get a car. And many people think that um, you know, you're not able to do it. and Right. And it, it's not easy, right? It's not like, hey, I want to buy a house or I want to buy a car. You had to work for it. You had to, you, you oh. had to have a plan. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I mean, because right. if, again, if you don't pay that, um, that bankruptcy fee, that definitely comes first because you, you want to go through the process. If you don't, then, then it could be, you know, it could, you, you wasted a. Uh, um, a good opportunity to get everything fixed. So you definitely want to make sure you have the money for it. And, and you know, of course, again, with the Chapter 13, I think what it does is it, it kind of it gets you to, to in a pattern of responsibility, really, with your finances. Right. And it's a, uh, you know, it, it takes a couple years after the bankruptcy is filed for you to qualify for a car loan or to qualify for a mortgage loan. But it's no. really... It's something that is, you know, definitely a hundred percent doable. And, you know, right now, um, I know you're working at Roundies, and I hear that your wife is working at Roundies, and uh, your kids are getting ones in high school, going to high school. You have your house. I know you, you you've wanted to live near near a lake, and you know you've reached yeah. that dream. And uh, I'm just I'm just touched that you would take the time um, to chat with me today. And sure. um, uh, just, I just want to say thank you for sharing your story. And uh, hey, I'm- Hey, anytime. It's, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad, if I can help in any way, because again, you guys helped me a lot. It, it really did. I, I'm, I'm very glad I went through the process. So, so you know, it, it, again, it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> but right. but it, it is something definitely that you know it, it just really helped me a lot. Yeah. And if anyone out there needs to know, like I'm not I'm not um, just I'm not a paid uh, um, <laughs> actor. For you. Right. This is something that really did help me. So. Yeah. yeah. And and it and I appreciate you know the the accolades to us for helping you, but it is a hundred percent a partnership. And if you didn't, if you weren't focused, if you weren't working hard, if you, you know, weren't saving to be able to get your home, to be able to get to the car, you know, you and your wife are both working hard. You're, you're just a great example of a success story. And it's not, you're not successful because of the bankruptcy. You're successful because, you know, you're doing it the right way and you used bankruptcy as a tool to really help you out of an unfortunate situation. And I, I know the last thing that you wanted to do is do this, 
and uh, you wouldn't have done it if you didn't have to. Uh, at the same time, you're, you're on your feet now and you're moving forward, your future is bright. Excited for for uh, for you guys, and um, it's, it's just it's just great. It's just great, and I just want to thank you so much. Yes, sir.